So in this video, we're going to show what a VPC is made of. And what we'll specifically look at here is the default VPCs that are created in your account. Now, every region in AWS comes with a default VPC, and that's set up for your convenience so that you can get started right away by spinning up servers and all that good stuff, which will automatically get placed into your default VPC by default. So what is this default VPC made out of? So we can click into VPCs here and just see kind of the high level VPC item. It has an ID, of course, and it has a CIDR range. So 172.3.1.0.0.16 is one of the typically three different private network IP address ranges you can choose from. Now, that wasn't an exactly accurate statement, but I'll show you that soon enough. So I'll, I'll skip that for now. This is just uh, the default that you're going to see in most accounts, this range of 172.3.1.0.0 slash 16. And if we wanted to, we can head on over to a subnet calculator and see something like that. So 172.31.0.0.16 was the range we got. And that is a big range of about 65,000 hosts that we could possibly have, right? That many IP addresses that we could possibly use. That's quite a bit. And we can see the range of addresses is from 3100 to 3125255 with a different, slightly smaller range of actual usable IP addresses. Okay, so we have a VPC. It gives us a private network IP address range. And anytime we add a server to this VPC or some kind of resource that has a network connection, it's going to grab an IP address from our available pool of IP addresses here and assign it to that server for that server's private network. Now, I'm not talking about public networks where the public internet can reach that server. I'm just talking about private networks here. So by default, we have some subnets in this VPC. So if we head on over to our dashboard here, we'll see subnets is three. Now, the Ohio region has three availability zones in it, and the default VPC always creates one subnet per availability zone. So you'll see one in my US East 2 region here in Ohio for availability zone, US East 2A, 2B, and 2C, right? So one per availability zone. And the way they decided to segment it out is a slash 20 CIDR range, which gives us about 4,000 IP addresses per subnet. So what is a subnet? A subnet is carving up your VPC into smaller networks. This lets you do a few things. First and foremost, like I just showed you, it's specific to an availability zone. So when you add a server to a specific subnet, that is how you decide what availability zone that server is running inside of. So subnets are a way to get servers and resources into different availability zones, and they can also help you segment your traffic type. So for example, your public traffic, the traffic that is meant to be accessible from the outside public internet might go in subnets that allow public traffic. And you might have other subnets that are dedicated to private network traffic. They don't allow external traffic to access it. They only allow private network traffic. And maybe you add something like a NAT gateway so that those servers can speak to the outside internet without the outside internet speaking to those servers. I'll show you that in a little bit as well. So by default, each subnet has one route table. So if we go to route tables here, route tables are settings that tell the network how to route traffic depending on uh, where the traffic is going. So it's originating in the server and going out somewhere. Route tables will tell AWS and the VPC how to route that traffic. By default, each subnet in the default VPC has the same route table, and the route table has a route that says anything inside of the public, or I'm sorry, in the private IP address. So if I'm inside of my server, and I send a curl request to an IP address that's inside of our private network, then it's going to go to the target local. In other words, it's going to stay in that local private network. Now, if I do a curl request to something like google.com, something in the outside internet, it's going to go through the internet gateway. And the internet gateway is what allows the uh, server to talk to the outside world. And the internet gateway actually allows the outside world to talk to your server. So an internet gateway here, we can see internet gateways are here. We'll see at least one here, one for this um, region, one created for this default VPC is created and our route tables have it assigned so that um, when we make requests to the outside world, they go through the internet gateway and the outside world is reached. The outside public internet is reachable from those servers. Now the internet gateway is two way. Um, the outside world can also talk to your server through the public IP address that the uh, VPC assigns your server when you spin one up. Okay, so we have a default VPC in each region. The VPC has subnets. 
by default, there's going to be one subnet per availability zone in whatever region you happen to be inside of. The number of availability zones changes per region. So there's three in US East 2 in Ohio, and I think there's something like four or five in US East 1. And each subnet has one route table. The same route table is given to each subnet, and that subnet says that any web traffic to the outside world goes through an internet gateway. And any server added to these subnets will be given a public IP address and be reachable from the outside world. Uh, so there's no notion of a private network subnet um, in your default VPC. That's something you have to create yourself. And to reiterate, in order to do a little bit of a more higher availability configuration in your AWS account, you might want to add your service into different availability zones within your given region. And the way to do that is to put servers in different subnets and to have different subnets assigned to different availability zones. That gets your servers spread across the region into different availability zones. Now note, there's actually bandwidth charges for uh, bandwidth going across availability zones, even within the same region. So any traffic going to servers inside of the same availability zone is done for free. There's no bandwidth charge on that. But if you're going across availability zones, then there is a bandwidth charge. OK, that's enough of that stuff, talking about the default Vault VPC inside of your account. Let's actually move on a little bit here and talk a little bit more about the IP address ranges that you can pick for your VPCs and how you might want to split up those networks into different subnets.